Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Moran and this is the place where I share my crochet objet knitting journey mostly mixed with basically everything that brings me joy and hopefully will bring you some joy as well. Today is Wednesday, uh, September 20 and we are having the Jewish holiday season here in Israel. Last Friday we celebrated the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah. We had a lovely family dinner here in our home. So last week was a little bit like on the busy side, but we had a lovely, lovely dinner. We, we had quite a busy uh, week uh, and that's that's the reason why I couldn't record and upload a video uh, last week. We were busy with a lot of, you know, shopping, grocery, grocery shopping and cooking and preparing the place for such a big dinner. We had to bring a table from outside, from the balcony garden and to attach to big tables to make place for everyone and we also reorganized the living room to make it cozy for everyone and it was indeed a very cozy family evening. We had some traditional food that my aunt cooked for us and Eyal's mom also made something special for the holiday and so all in all we had a very good time here we spent hours together after the dinner sitting and laughing and having making beautiful memories yeah so we had a lovely lovely Rosh Hashanah dinner here and I'm very glad we did it and um, yeah, after that, we, all the five of us, we were uh, rearranging the place back to its normal position and we got, got to spend the two holiday days after the dinner uh, having two quiet and easy and calming days and I had some time to knit and crochet and I will share uh, all the progress I made in my projects here with you today. Uh, I will also try to add footage that I took uh, from our last recent um, knitting clubs. Uh, we had the Monday club here before the Rosh Hashanah dinner and a knit night and also yesterday evening I had a knit night and I took some footage to share with you today but we shall see if I have the time to edit and to edit this footage to this uh, to the end of this episode, I will do it because tomorrow Eyal and myself are traveling. And I will share more details about it later in this episode, but I have just a short time to record an episode here with you today. So we will see. I don't want to spend a lot of time editing this video. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how my Mm, talking goes if it's fluent or if I will have to spend time editing. Anyway, I do have some footage to share, hopefully at the end of this video. And uh, yeah, I will also share details about our upcoming um, trip with the Yals family. But I think we can start with some uh, knitting and crochet. Mm. And I do have my cold brew with me so I hope you also have something nice to drink with you or maybe something to knit this is what I do when I watch knitting episodes and not just knitting episode um, episodes uh, I do have some um, YouTube channels that I want to share that I love and enjoy and I want to share with you here but today I have to keep it short so yeah First work in progress is a knitting project and today we are starting with this one. So this is a sock project that I'm making for my cousin. He was also visiting, he came from Berlin to celebrate Rosh Hashanah with us uh, and I was very happy. I will 
I think I will not manage to finish these socks for him before he's heading back to Berlin, but we will have more opportunities, so. Yeah, so I need this pair for him, and hopefully there is enough light for you to see. I'm knitting my chestnut uh, sock pattern. I, this pattern is available in my Etsy shop and um, I think also in my Ravelry shops, shop. Not all, all of my patterns are yet in, on Ravelry. Um, just because I don't have the time, I wanted to make them all available in my Ravelry shop, but I will link the pattern down below in the description box for you. So uh, under this uh, picture of me, you can, you see uh, there's a little bit of um, like a description and then it's written uh, show more or see more. And if you click on this more, you can get all the details and the show notes uh, of everything mentioned in this, in this episode. So I will link the chestnut sock pattern there for you. So I started with knitting, I'm knitting the large size from the pattern and in one sock, in this sock, I have, um, I am almost, I think I almost finishing the gusset decreases. So I think I have one more decrease to make. But as you can see, I started uh, with a rib, with a rib section. And for the rib, I used um, Aweta by Phil Colana. I used this dark green. Unfortunately, I don't have the, the, lab the label for this color, but this is, I think, the darker green they have on the Aweta collection. Uh, the Aweta yarn is uh, 20 superwash merino, to 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon, 210 meters per 50 grams. So I knitted, uh, I think 24, the patterns, the pattern instructs to knit 24 rounds of rib two by two and then I knitted 50 rounds uh, for the leg. And after I had 50 rounds, I here I also have 50 rounds, and now I'm ready to turn the sock inside out, and this is the result. And for the sock, I use, let me show you, yeah. This project lives in this bag, the wool barn bag. I purchased it from um, Maya from the wool barn a years ago. I'm not sure if this is available now, but you can contact Maya. She's a lovely lady and she will let you know. Um, for this pair of socks, I'm using a yarn I purchased um, on our trip to Austria and Berlin. And I think it was one of the wool, sock wool that I found in supermarkets or in um, other kind of shop. So this, this is the yarn. It's a Schechermeyer. Uh, so cool, 100 grams and 420 meters. I'm not sure what is the name of the color, but it's 75% superwash merino wool or superwash wool and 25% polyamide. I'm not sure if it says superwash because it's written, I think, in German but it says 75% wool for sure. Color 188, yes, I found the color. So, color 188. 
color 188. Yeah, and as in most cases, I use a nine inch circular needles. Um, this is a 2.25 um, centimeters short, 2.25 millimeter and nine inch uh, circular, which is I think uh, 24 centimeters short circular, circular needle by Chiagu. This is usually my go-to needles for socks. And then I um, knit, okay, so after knitting 50 rounds for the leg, I turn the sock inside out as instructed in the chestnut sock pattern. And I love, love, love these garter bumps. And I love what it do, what it does to the colors, the way it blends the colors. I hope the camera can take it. But I really, really love these tiny little detail of pearl bumps uh, showing at the out, at the, the, the face, facing out. Yeah, so after 50 rounds, I turn the sock, in, the, the leg inside out, and I'm making um, like two double stitches as instructed in the pattern. And then I knit my go-to heel flap, which is a slip stitch heel flap. And then I knitted the heel turn and then I pick up stitches and started the gusset decreases. Um, the heel flap, for the heel flap section, I changed to a long circular needle. So the heel flap and the heel turn, I, we, I usually knit on a long circular needle, same size, 2.25 millimeter. And usually I uh, pick up stitches putting back all the stitches back on the short circular needle and I go back to knit in a small round, um, which is my personal prefer preference, but you can do the whole, the entire sock on a long circular needle or using five DPNs. Uh, it's all included in the pattern. So I, at the moment, I am just about to start knitting the foot section and I plan to use the same Aweta yarn for the foot section. And on the second sock, I am just about to start the heel flap. So this is where I am with this project. I hope I didn't forget any of the details that you are interested in. And if I forgot something and you have a question, please feel free to leave your question down below in the comment section. So yeah, this is the socks that I'm knitting for my cousin. Um, and unfortunately, I will not make it to finish it before he leaves uh, back to Berlin. But we will find an opportunity. And yeah, I will knit in my own, like, Phase, I think you say it, um, and then when it's ready, we will find a way to. I will find a way to give it to him. So just a little bit of coffee, so I can keep on talking smoothly. Uh, next work in progress is this one, and this one lives in my fringe supply bag. Yeah. Um, so this knitting project is going to be, uh, hopefully is going to be a raglan tee or a raglan sweater. I knit myself a raglan sweater, basic, and I, go, I went and looked how to say it, say it because on my last episode I couldn't find the word. Uh, this is a self drafted pattern so i have a very similar tea knitted raglan uh, a top-down raglan that i needed for myself four years ago and it's 
a staple in my wardrobe. Um, and I made it originally using my granny kit cotton in the black color, in jet color. And I use it a lot. And I wanted to, to knit a new version of the same tee uh, for myself. And the first one is, have, it has a lot of positive ease. Um, I think maybe something like 20 centimeters positive ease. And I am aiming for less positive ease in this version. And also uh, I want, the, the original tee has a very like close high neck uh, and I want this one to be even closer so very tight to the neck and um, so here I am just about to okay it's a black project so it's very very hard to show but yeah I started knitting flat uh, to sh and I shaped uh, the back to be a little bit higher than the front and when I um, was happy with the back shape I cast on a few more stitches I think 20 stitches and I closed to knit in the round and now I made my way knitting in the round knitting and knitting and knitting all these joyful knitting, simple stockinette stitch, knitting in the round, um, increasing for the raglan. So I have five, um, four raglans and I have two raglan stitches in each and I'm increasing in every other round in both sides of each raglan. Yeah, my camera is taking it I think yeah so as you can see I have already so I started to knit in the round and I uh, increased for the raglan every other round uh, and then I in one point I stopped and and I decided to pick up stitches and take a look and 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 start knitting the neck hem which is a rib two by two, as you can see, just to make sure I reach the right point that I want to reach for the neck opening. So yeah, for I'm knitting the, the sweater using a 3.25 millimeter hook. And when I picked up stitches for the neck hem and I knitted the neck hem, I changed to 2.75 millimeter. So 3.25 millimeter is the three US size. 2.75, I have them here, is what I needed the hem with is a two. Is a two US size needles. Uh, yeah, and for this raglan, uh, this time, I'm using this yarn. I shared it also on my previous episode, so I don't want to, you know, repeat all the details, but I have this yarn linked in my Amazon storefront, which is also linked down below in the description box for you. Um, this yarn is, again, is mostly cotton, but it has 10% cashmere, and I'm very excited to have like a little bit of wool so i do love to to you know having um a wool garments but here in israel there is not a lot of there are not a lot of days that i can really wear woolly heavy woolly garments but i do still love the way woolly garments look so i'm very happy to to you know, no more and more blends of cotton and wool and uh, to be, you know, exploring and trying. And when I uh, finished knitting the hem, the neck hem, I tried it on just to make sure it's nice against the skin. So it 
it's really very very soft and very um, feels very nice against the skin I'm very happy with this uh, choice I made and very happy with this knitting it's a stockinette stitch you know you knit in the round um, more or less uh, I think I'm very close to separate uh, sleeves and body because in this version I want to have something like 10 centimeters uh, positive is and I think my gauge is 22 or 23 stitches so I'm very very per 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 four inch four inches so per 10 centimeters so I am very close to separate body and sleeves um, and yeah I'm very you know I, I enjoy knitting just the plain stocking it in the round uh, but unfortunately I do have some joints issues uh, and I cannot knit as much as my soul wants to knit so I have to be mindful and I uh, knitted less than I wanted to knit so but anyway I made some progress and I'm very happy with it I had a very unrealistic dream to be traveling it to our next um, our travel to Poland and, and to Copenhagen but it was really unrealistic dream I was too busy and didn't have enough time and also I cannot you know knit for long long hours with my um, joints pain uh, so it will take time it will take time I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, knit long sleeves or short sleeves but I will decide as I go I guess um, and I'm not sure I'm taking this project with me maybe I will but I'm not sure yet because if I will manage to separate the body and sleeves before we we go I will probably take it with me but I'm not sure yet so this is it for this project and this is where I am with my top-down self-drafted raglan yeah and next work in project next work in progress is another knitting project and I think you can tell it's my uh, the coziest memory blanket uh, and I made quite a progress in my coziest memory blanket this week not as much as I wanted to knit but I have three you know what I'm not sure how how many rows I have completed for in the last episode so sorry <laughs> I'm sorry I don't remember what it was um, in the last episode I should maybe go and check before recording this episode but anyway this is where I am now I received uh, my new this month's uh, row one pack I have a row one subscription and I got two pretty uh, I got ten pretty um, I think 10 grams of hand dyed yarns, hand dyed wool, and some of the colors are already here. And uh, yeah, and some of the colors will be joining later or maybe will not um, find their place here in this blanket. Anyway, this is the coziest memory blanket. It's a free pattern on Ravelry by a designer named Kemper Ray. And I really, really enjoy it. This week, I added this, this uh, pink and green square. And while knitting it, I suddenly realized that this was the this wool was uh, the one I used for the second sock that I ever knitted so for 
for sure it's the coziest memory blanket adding you know like a little leftover from the second sock I've ever knitted so yeah not a lot to say about it uh, I think I already told you I am made a few little changes to the pattern a lot of the knitters that are knitting this project made the same um, are making are making the same changes I knit the first stitch to the through the back loop and the last stitch I slip with a yarn held in back more and more knitters in my uh, weekly knitting me, uh, groups clubs <laughs> are joining this coziest memory journey which makes me very very happy because there are more knitters to share yarn with and more knitters to share this joy and special very very special making Yeah, so we, uh, every time we meet, we give and take yarns and we uh, share the joy, the enjoyment of the making. Yeah, so I think I already explained, I have no rush making it. I, you know, add a square whenever, wherever I can. Uh, I am totally in love with the making. It's a very simple making and very calming making. And all the color stories are bringing a lot of joy to to the making process, progress, uh, to the making process. So, yeah. Um, and I think this week I, like I said, I wanted to knit more, but. I couldn't really knit, it, knit as much as I wanted to uh, so I took the time and I weaved in a lot of yarn ends so I have now the back side of the work already very clean I spent quite, quite some time weaving in the ends uh, so what I usually do, I uh, take two, I only weave in ends when I have uh, a meeting point between four squares. So let's see if I have a sample here, but um, yeah, like here. When I have uh, four squares together, I have two yarn ends. So what I usually do, I make a knot or two and then I take each of the yarn ends and I weave it in um, in between the stitches uh, for in the same color so yeah during Rosh Hashanah I spent quite some time weaving, weaving in ends and um, I was very happy that I'm doing doing it because you know we prefer I think I prefer knitting than weaving, weaving in ends, but because I wanted to have a break from knitting, I spent some time uh, weaving in the ends and it also made me very happy that I made some progress also um, in this direction for this project. So yeah, this is where I am um, with this project. I think I already shared, I am still, uh, I still insist to keep this project in this uh, project bag, although it's getting bigger and maybe it's not like the most um, suitable bag for such a project, for a blanket project, but I like the way the way they are living together one with each other uh, and i do really like this um, front pocket because i can you know keep my scissors here i keep usually i keep my scissors here and i keep um, the tapestry needles that i use 
all are linked down below in my Amazon storefront. And, and yeah, and I keep my needles also here because when you finish knitting a square, you, you have empty needles with no, no stitches on them. So it's really comfortable to stuck them here in this front pocket. And for this project, I've already shared it many times. I'm using the Signatures Art Needles. I think this is how you call them. A 2.25 millimeter with a stiletto uh, tips. And these, these I, th I think they are seven inch. Yeah, with this bell shape and so yeah they are stuck here in uh the front pocket and are waiting for to be busy again and yeah so this was the 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 progress i made in this project the last project that i'm going to share is my granny square blanket project it lives in the Nina bag. The Nina bag is a crochet pattern available in my Etsy and Ravelry uh, stores. I will also link this pattern down below in the description box for you. Um, and this week I also, because I couldn't really knit so much and crochet so much, and also because I couldn't wait I took the time to um, join a few squares just to just to have the opportunity to see how it looks when it's joined. So actually, I joined uh, one, two, three, four, five squares in this direction, but only two rows in this direction but I think you can get the idea of how this project how this blanket is going to look like for the joining I used the front slip stitch method which I have a video tutorial here shared on my youtube channel I will link it down below for you but I used the front slip stitch method this is the joining that I wanted to use when I first started this, this is what I have in, I had in my head. But sometimes when you come to the point when you bring your idea to life, you can see things that you couldn't see and maybe uh, think that it's not what is suitable for the project. But I really, really love the way it looks. I really like this line of chain stitches, flat, joining my squares. And I'm totally in love with this meeting point between four squares and between four of these bubbles couples. So I joined just, you know, a small, a small piece just to get the idea and to see how it looks. I couldn't really wait to see it and I couldn't wait to share it with you as well. I really love the, all the corner spaces and these lines that are traveling from end to end. I really, really like it. So, and now after, you know, I shared on my last episode, I uh, spread the squares that I crocheted on our bed. Uh, so I know more or less what size I want to make for this blanket. I, I know what size blanket I am um, aiming for, so I can make the calculation. I only have this yarn left. For this project I'm using the um, knitting for Olive Merino. Let's see if I have the label to share here with you. Yes, I do have it. So the knitting for Olive Merino in color soft rose so each of the balls and i think each ball is 250 meters per 50 grams 
So each ball makes eight, um, eight squares. And I only have this left from the yarn. Uh, but I do plan to, um, to purchase more and I did all the calculations to get prepared and to know how many more balls will I need to finish this project. And I plan to purchase it on our visit to Copenhagen, um, I think in, not in the next week, but the week after. Uh, and I hope I will manage to visit Knitting for Olive shop and purchase more of this yarn. For these squares I follow the um, solid square tutorial that I have here on my channel as well. Uh, it's a seven round square. I shared all the details I think for a few times in previous episodes so I don't think I will uh, repeat myself again and again. But yeah, I am very, very excited uh, to purchase more yarn in person in the Knitting for Olive uh, shop uh, on our upcoming trip. For this project, I use a three millimeter crochet hook. Um, and I think I will travel with this ball and crochet hook and will crochet as many um, squares as the ball will uh, give me. So this, I think this ball is going to, this ball and this um, crochet hook are going to travel with me um, to our upcoming uh, trip. So yeah, tomorrow Eyal and myself are going to be traveling with his family with my mother-in-law and his brother, my uh, brother and sister-in-law. We are going to go to Poland. It was something that Yal's mom wanted for a long time. They already visited Poland for a few times for like to go and visit the places their parents were um, both born in Poland. So they made like, I think they visited there with both with their both parents before. And Eyal's mom, she always miss um, the places in Poland she remember from her childhood. So we are going to be traveling with her. Finally, we managed uh, to do it. It was planned uh, from quite a long time ago before COVID. And now we found the time that it's good for all five of us. And we will travel, we will be flying to Warsaw, and then we will be traveling in the lake area uh, and then, you know, visit some cities in the lake area and, uh, and then we will go back to Varsha and spend two days in Varsha together. Um, and yeah, uh, she's very excited about it. We are excited uh, as well. After we will finish uh, the visit in Poland, um, Eyal's mother will stay two more days in Warsha with a family friend, nice lady that she's a researcher. She's researching uh, families in Poland during Holocaust days. So she made a, a lot of interviews to interview Eyal's father and his brother. Um, they have very um, interesting, if I can say, stories about uh, the Holocaust and, and, and she wrote a lot about it and, you know, and we know her for years. So she is a friend of the family for years. Every time she comes to Israel, she uh, stay with Eyal's mother. So after we finish uh, our trip together, Eyal's mom will stay two days with this lovely uh, lady, Anya. We are very happy uh, for them to spend some time together. Eyal's mother is very looking forward uh, to be, she wanted to stay longer. Um, Eyal's brother and his wife, they will continue from there. They will go to Portugal 
And Eyal and myself are going to have five more days uh, in Copenhagen. So we found a very, uh, like, cheap, I think, um, flight to Copenhagen. We were very, very happy and we immediately took it. We wanted to visit Copenhagen for quite a while. Uh, it's not the first visit for me, it's the second visit. For Eyal, it's the third visit. I visited Copenhagen many years ago when I graduated Shenkar College. I went to, I think it was Shenkar College when I, when I graduated and I had my textile design uh, degree. Um, the staff, the teachers, like they found a place for me and they, the Shenkar College sent me to make a short stage, you can call it, in a forecast, color forecast studio in Amsterdam. So Eyal and myself decided to go for a trip in the Scandinavian um, countries before this stage begins. Uh, and so we were, both of us were students, we were very, very young. Uh, we almost didn't have any money to spend, but we somehow, we spent three weeks in Scandinavia and we also um, visited Copenhagen. So I remember I really, really loved uh, the city and I was very um, waiting to come back to visit, to, to, to have another visit there. So now we finally have the found the nice opportunity to go back and visit Copenhagen. I made quite a research and I found that this city is full of yarn shops. God knows how will I manage with the YAL, but I do plan to visit at least a few of them. And we found a nice Airbnb apartment uh, and I hope to take my camera and to, you know, take some footage of, you know, my, if I will make it to visit uh, yarn shops or whatever. Anyway, I do plan to visit Knitting for Olive and to purchase more yarn for my granny square pink throw or blanket. I think in terms of what I'm taking with me to knit, uh, I plan to knit a pair of socks using um, these colors from my last row one pack and um, this color from Aweta by Phil Colana and this yarn I think it's a Regia or Shechemeyer sock wool that I purchased in Austria so I will for sure take socks with me and um, I'm going to need a pair of socks for a friend uh, we have a couple uh, friends that they are going to live in Amsterdam. They are going to leave Israel at the beginning of November, so I want to be uh, ready with a pair, at least a pair for each of them, uh, so they can take with them when they leave. Uh, so this is what I'm taking. I always love to take socks when I travel, uh, and maybe I will take my black raglan or just um, my crochet hook and the knitting for olive yarn to uh, keep on making squares for my blanket. So this is what I plan in terms of travel knitting. Um, yeah, I think this is it for today. This was, I think this is what I was aiming to share. It's for sure longer than what I planned. It's already about 50 minutes recording. Unbelievable. I wanted it to be like 30 minutes maximum. Anyway, I will finish this podcast here and go to make some more laundry before I go and some more cooking for the kids. I already prepared some food and put it in the freezer and when I finish recording this episode, I plan to go and cook some more food for them so they have what to eat when we are not here. Um, yeah, and make some more packing. Um, 
and tomorrow morning we are leaving to Poland. So yeah, thank you so much for listening to me talking and talking and talking. If you are still here, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed um, and yeah, I will do my best to take some footage for you uh, while I'm visiting yarn shops, at least the yarn shops. Uh, I'll do my best to add some footage at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you when I'm back hopefully. Until then, happy making! Bye! Mm -hmm.